Speaking of formats, we're going to start off today's show by discussing the SEC scheduling formats. Now, we have not talked about this much. We know that it is down to two options, and that would be an eight-game schedule with one permanent opponent, seven rotating, or a nine-game SEC conference schedule, which would be three permanent opponents and six rotating opponents. Now, I have my own thoughts about this. Um, I believe that they are going to move to nine because you want to have as much of that inventory in-house as possible. I don't know that everybody in the SEC is going to agree on this. Uh, If it were not a question, then I believe that we would have already come out and said that it would be nine games. But there are those teams, Kentucky, Vanderbilt, South Carolina, etc., that kind of need those non-conference games in order to make sure that they are going bowling on a regular basis. Now, Kentucky, not so much this year, not so much last year. Obviously, Kentucky won 10 games last year, etc. There are years in which those teams are good enough that they don't have to rely on a weak non-conference schedule. But uh, when it all comes down to business, and that's what all of this is, right, with college football, it's all business. You want the best possible games that you can come up with for your TV partners, which for the SEC would be Disney, ESPN, ABC, etc., uh, all tied into one group, of course. But when you have those, it, you want to make sure that you give them the best product that you can. And the best product for the SEC is, honestly, more SEC games. The more times that Alabama and Oklahoma play, the better. The more times that Texas and LSU play, the better. So you are going to see more of those games. Um, and you're gonna if you can have nine games in a season, as opposed to eight, that you can give your provider, that's certainly going to help things. But again, there are a lot of teams that might want to stick at eight games. And I don't know that it's necessarily a terrible idea. I'll go ahead and pull up on the screen what I have for this. Now, these are just my thoughts. There are multiple of them running around. If you want to really dive into it, you can go and check out uh, Dave Bartu at CFB Matrix on Twitter. And he's got a very similar set up, right? A lot of pictures and whatnot where he's going through and trying to figure out exactly what they're going to do. But when you look at this, uh, the eight game, one permanent opponent, there are a few that you are just not going to be able to get away from. The Disney properties and the SEC want Texas and Oklahoma. Like it, that is going to happen. And I know a lot of people talking about Texas, Texas A&M, but bottom line, Oklahoma, Texas is a much higher rated game and always has been. Now, I'm sure that the first Texas-Texas A&M game, when we come back, is going to be huge. Uh, But the permanent opponents here, I've got Alabama and Auburn, Arkansas and Missouri, Florida and Georgia. Uh, Let's see, we've got uh, Kentucky-Tennessee I put on there, and that's filling in gaps, basically. Ole Miss-Mississippi State, LSU-Texas A&M. And then to fill in more gaps, uh, I did South Carolina and Vanderbilt and then Kentucky and Tennessee. So it, those are the ones that I think would be the permanent opponent if we stuck with an eight-game schedule. But when you dive it out further, that's where it starts to get a little weird. The only one that I've got on here that I think is not one that people would normally see would be Georgia and Ole Miss. And that's because I could not figure out exactly how to make it even all across the board, right? Right. Alabama would have Auburn, Tennessee, Oklahoma. Arkansas would have Missouri, LSU, and Texas. Auburn would have Alabama, Mississippi State, and Georgia. Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Kentucky. Georgia would have Florida, Ole Miss, and Auburn. Kentucky would have Tennessee, Kentucky, and Florida. Uh, LSU, Texas A&M, Arkansas, and Ole Miss. Ole Miss would have Mississippi State, Georgia, and LSU. Uh, Mississippi State would have Ole Miss, Auburn, Texas A&M. And I know this is a little tedious, but I want to make sure I get through all of it. Missouri has Arkansas, Oklahoma, and South Carolina. Oklahoma has Texas, Missouri, and Alabama. Uh, South Carolina, Vanderbilt, Florida, and Missouri. Tennessee would have Kentucky, Alabama, and Vanderbilt. And then the last three, Texas with Oklahoma, Texas A&M, and Arkansas. Texas A&M has LSU, Texas, and Mississippi State. And then Vanderbilt. Coming in last, South Carolina, 
Kentucky, and Tennessee. The only one that doesn't make a lot of sense is Georgia and Ole Miss. But if you look at it regionally, and if you look at the fan bases, uh, those are two teams that, for the most part, enjoy playing each other. Uh, If I'm not mistaken, the last time that Georgia and Ole Miss played, Ole Miss actually won the game. So, now that's been several years ago. So, yes, things have changed since then. But I don't think Lane Kiffin would shy away from playing Georgia. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, I do think that there are certain ways that you can kind of rearrange this and whatnot. Uh, Obviously, Georgia Ole Miss might not be the best matchup. Maybe you get Georgia South Carolina, and then you find somebody else for South Carolina. But then you got to find somebody else for Ole Miss as well. So, it becomes a whole other thing. you got to shift a lot around when you're doing it. But there are ways that you can come up with different schedules. We would like to know what you think. If you would, toss it into the YouTube comments, and uh, and we'll see which way they end up going. Uh, it's probably going to be some time before they announce it. I would imagine at this point, I don't think I don't think Oklahoma and Texas are coming into the SEC until the 2025 season or after. I don't even remember which one it is. But regardless, it's going to be a little while. And I don't know that they feel like they have to announce anything right now. They're going to let everything settle, talk to the ones that they need to talk to to get exactly what they want, and then we'll go from there. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.